Ready? Yep, ready. Okay, so this is Castle. Castle is an approximately a thousand gram guinea pig, an adult, probably about at least a year, that we are neutering today. So what we've done before already, so we've pre-medicated with midazolam and buprenorphine. He's on inhaled isoflurane. We've shaved, we've prepped. We've also done a local lidocaine block with 0.1 mLs on either side of our incision. So for our incision, we're going to be doing a midline incision. The landmarks I normally use are the umbilicus, which is up here, as well as you can see the hint of the prepuce here. So I'm going to be making, using a number 15 blade because that's just what I like, a midline incision. These guys are the most reactive when you're making the incision, it seems like. So if you need to have them a little bit higher, you can. All right, I make my incision probably about in the region of two centimeters or so. Then going to dissect off some sub Q. So, and then here's my body wall. You'll notice he's a little bit rotated towards this side. So I'm gonna have Jason, my assistant, kind of lift him up to get him back on midline. You're gonna look for the linea, which is like right there. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of faint. Not super well formed in these guys in the caudal ventral abdomen. So I'm actually gonna use rat tooths to pick up the linea. I get super paranoid about when I'm making a stab incision and potentially traumatizing the colon. So I'm gonna make my stab incision here. All right, and then I'm gonna grab my um, forceps and I'm actually gonna insert and I'm lifting way up. You can see the amount of tension I have there because I get super paranoid again about the colon. And I'm gonna just lightly dissect. And you can see here the um, peritoneum. Okay, all right. So at this point, I can normally find the testicles. Um, in the beginning, I definitely had to have an insistent kind of agitate them up. So I'm gonna have Jason show you what he's gonna do. Is he's gonna take his non-sterile hand He's gonna come under the guinea pig and he's gonna agitate the ball on the left side, the testicle on the left side, sorry. Balls. <laughs> sorry. Um, all right, so what I'm holding here in my hemostats is I'm holding the linea here and I'm looking over here and I can see the fat moving. And in an adult guinea pig, it's gonna be a really well-formed fat bundle. So this is obviously the left testicle. I've exteriorized it. You'll notice here it's attached to the inside of the scrotum. So I'm just gonna gently break that down, super easy. And I'm gonna clamp. So here we have our testicle. Here is our, um, t there you'll notice as these guys do get bigger and older that they'll put more fat right here, which is with the cremaster muscle as well as the vessel. Here's the ductus. So I'm just gonna place my clamp there and I'm gonna do, I typically do two encircling ligatures and I will normally do three odd monocryl. I like a monofilament for these guys and I especially like monocryl because it tends to break down pretty quickly and it doesn't tend to produce um, inflammatory reactions. I've seen PDS will. So I'm just going to do my two encircling ligatures here. So there's one. And did you say last time that you use a different type of ligature if it's a very fat guinea pig? So in some cases, I will use a transfixation ligature and not all the time. Um, I feel like their like pedicle is not kind of typically as risky to um, have a ligature slippage, but I personally have always liked transfixation ligatures. So, And so now that I've made my two ligatures here and here, I'm gonna cut here, okay? I'm gonna put my testicle over there. Always just make sure it's not bleeding. It normally does not. In fact, I'd say most of the cause of bleeding you have tends to be from the musculature. But you'll notice right here, here's my colon hanging out. So you can see again why I'm super cautious when I make my stab incision. All right, so taking my muscle, 
slipping that back in. Jason's now gonna kind of agitate the testicle on the other side, so the right side of the animal. And I'm gonna try to peel back the muscle so you guys can kind of see what you're looking for. It's a very distinctive fat color. So I think I can see it right there. Yep. Yeah, and I'm just going to grab nicely. it and exteriorize it. Uh, you do want to make sure that your incision on your body wall is big enough to allow your testicle to come out. So I got a little bit of bleeding here, but not too much. I'm going to go ahead and clamp here and do my two ligatures again. And so you'll find, unlike a dog or a cat, they really don't as much tend to have reaction during the actual like ligature. I find that dogs tend to react when I'm actually like clamping. These guys don't. It really does tend to be when you're making your body wall incision and when you're closing your body wall incision. So again, I'm going to move that up. I'm gonna cut there. There's my second testicle. Gonna get ready to close. I don't do anything special for closing except that again, just like when I made the incision, I'm super cautious about where I'm placing ligatures. So started I start at the caudal aspect. Definitely make sure you're getting both sides of the body wall, obviously. Um, and so I'll tend to do a simple continuous with only maybe two to three throws here in terms of to close it and then I will close the um, subcutaneous with an interdermal and then do just a little bit of skin glue and then post-op these guys will get a Medicam injection as well as some key fluids. I did forget to mention we had already cleaned out their mouth, super important with these guys. So, um, And so since I can't see, since I'm kind of blind closing here, I'm going to grab this and lift up and just check everything and make sure that I don't have any colon or any part of small intestine. The other thing you obviously have to be careful of is that you're pretty close to the bladder and it's not uncommon to inadvertently like grab the bladder fat and exteriorize it thinking it's a testicle. But over time, you're gonna see that the testicular fat looks very different. It's much more friable than the regular fat in the body. And for these guys that are really big, um, I try not to remove more of that testicular fat than I need to because there is a potential risk of intestinal herniation with that. Um, but I did have an exotic specialist tell me that that does tend to kind of um, fibrose down. So it doesn't seem like it's as much of an issue after a couple of weeks after surgery. So, and that is it. So I'm going to do an interdermal here, close my sub Q with a little bit of glue and that's it. All right.